موسیقی What, be, what does Islam give in to many people today? And what is the cultural aspect and the cultural diversity which Islam welcomes you? So, I will be with you all for the next 35 to 40 minutes. I will take you through some interesting facts which both of us can share with each other. And afterwards, I can give you all about a 10-15 minutes time for you all to pose any questions, any doubts which you like to clarify. So, first of all, let me tell you that I will be giving an introduction about what basically Islam is with the purpose of life. What happens today when we say that there is a person who follows Islam? That's number one. Number two is how do we understand Islamic teachings? There is always a lot of misunderstandings, miscommunications going on here. Some people, you ask some people, you know, you guys follow something called Sharia ruling and uh, when you ask a layman what is Sharia ruling, they say that you know what is Sharia ruling? They take the head and keep it on a desk and they just cut that guy off. That's wrong. It's not Sharia ruling. Rule so what is these rulings which is like that? So a little about that, a little about what Muslims basically do, some of the interesting facts. And also I will end up my talk with some misconceptions. And when I was coming also, I think there was a topic on misconceptions going on. There are certain misconceptions which are there, so we will probably be discussing about that. To go off further, this is something which we always look into when we talk about Islam or any part of life. Let it be whatever faith you follow, let it be whatever faith you are not even interested in. There is something which we will not miss out here, that is our life. What are, we, what, what are we going to do now? What is the purpose of life? If you see, today's youngsters, most of the part of their life is spent on social media. And you will see a lot of people involved with Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and so forth. And after all, I saw an interesting post which says, for some people, life is not interesting as it is on Facebook. Trust me, life is not interesting for some as it is shown on Facebook. You, you, you guys meet people out there who have flashy photographs in their images and who say, I am going here, I am doing this, I am meeting this person and I am meeting that person. You think that that person's life is good? No, 90% chance he is acting. His life is not good. Everyone is going through a lot of issues. Everyone has troubles. And when everyone has troubles, what they try to do is they try to imitate, portray themselves that they are going through a very fine life. And that is something which we have to understand. Are we living towards some truth or are we cheating ourselves? And mind you, I have let a lot of Buddhist scriptures and I have learned that Lord Buddha has been right throughout teaching sciences in terms of this. Do not fake yourself just because you want to satisfy others. Because there are out there who are a lot of people who are not having anything at all. So you have to portray something basically good. So something try to be something positive. Now guys, when I am here to talk to you, by the time I'm going to leave that door in another 35 to 45 minutes, there has to be something which you guys have gained. There has to be something which you gain. Each time you come to a lecture, if you speak to a certain lecturer and you do not gain anything, while you are going there, go and have a word with your lecturer and say that, you know, I didn't learn anything today. Why don't you teach me something proper? Why do I say that? It's because the lifespan of every human is very little. And in this little time, what do we go on doing? We keep on arguing. 
we keep on fighting we say that i am the best you're the worst so i am right but you're wrong that is not what religion teaches that is not what islam teaches that is not what any Buddhi any religion basically teaches it's always important to respect the other person and only one foundation of every religion which has bought this in understanding another person that is by loving someone else trying to love someone else and that is one of the foundations of even christianity always if you have love towards something there will be always something which is going to be positive let me tell you something about a motivational story there was one person who used to teach something in class and there was a student who was not interested in anything this student just looks here and there and not interested in anything and this lecturer is teaching so well there is nothing wrong in his teaching there is nothing wrong in his subject he is so interesting all the students listen to him very keenly meaning he knows to grab the attention of the of, of the people in the audience but there is one guy who is not listening at all and what does he do he he, he waits for some time and he walks away out of class this this theory which happened here is has to be interpreted properly it does not mean that that student is not motivated to listen to the speaker that student is motivated by something else which made him walk out of the class see what he is interested in is he interested in something like movies that is why he is going there that means he loves movies more than what is being going in the class so the lecturer has to talk to him and see what is the reason so the reason is which is movies which is divertifying him say that okay I'm going to you know give you a test and whoever who passes this test might get a movie ticket with me to go out free these are how in US and in UK how university lecturers today try to motivate students because you have to make them love the subject and unless we don't love each other in that way we're not going to achieve anything no Muslim is going to achieve you know to the pinnacle of what they have to achieve if he is not going to love anything for himself and this is clearly taught in you know the prophetic teachings in Islam so going ahead with this see a person see uh, a certain thing which was published in a paper this is an old man who is 98 years something good happened to him he wins a lottery at 98 but what happens is he dies the next day what is your purpose of life are you are you going to have a 65 70 year lifespan and you're going to sleep you know one third of it and two third of it you're, not, you're going to fight with people argue with people that I am the best you're the worst I am right therefore you're wrong no it's going to be a total waste it's going to be like this and by the time you realize things you will understand that gosh what I have done in the past is really crazy I mean ask from yourself I ask it from myself what I used to think is right five years ago six years ago today is wrong and I think how stupid I was five six years ago that is something which you guys also have to think did you make right decisions or not did you waste the purpose understanding the purpose of life have you been hating people or have you been loving people with love positive energy goes out of your body and it is immense I remember a teaching which was taught in the English in the English books uh, during the for the local uh, students where they used to see uh, through some meat it's a galvano meat or it's called some name they used to test the response of plants a research regarding to do plants communicate do plants have life so that they keep this meter and they had two plants and what did they do they go near one plant and this person who wants to measure whatever reaction goes and shouts at the plant scolds the plant very harsh words very loud words there is a different response for that and for the other plant when you go and kindly touch the plant and speak kind words isn't this what our religions talk about isn't this what all the religions basically tell us be kind like this even to the plants when it comes into like that that is something which in the prophetic teachings which we learn this is a picture which I found a lot of calmness in the first picture which I have in the right hand side is where in this country there were a, a group of you know protesters protest is very common in Sri Lanka yeah so a group of protesters were going to protest out there and the army general was coming to control it the army general you know didn't know what to do and he had to control but honestly it was his birthday so the army general said look you may protest any other day you want but please don't make my day a bad day today is my birthday don't protest today the next the protesters go they make a cake for him and they all celebrated together his birthday it is out of love 
it is out of love and and how many which we can achieve this even what you can see in the right hand picture which is uh, i believe probably is in malaysia or indonesia where you know these people used to talk a lot about love and there was a time in sri lanka it's like that when the singhala urud festival comes you know we share a lot of food and when the muslim festivals come we share a lot of food and even in other festivals we do like that that is one way of how we used to you know share love with everyone that is something which we have to keep on developing coming into understanding islam so islam as a faith has followers who are called as muslims and this has been this goes through the beloved our, our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam may peace be and be and blessings be upon him his teachings so whatever you find in the quran is probably what the prophet has told people through revelation and whatever he has told from him is also coming into our religion now there is something important which we have to understand here islam is one of the most simple religion which we see and also people com people complicate it there is sometimes you have to understand that there is nothing wrong with the religion but there is uh, problems with regarding to people who are trying to interpret it and follow it even we have to exercise a long period of studies in order to interpret these words it's not mere learning a translation and trying to talk you have to learn the grammar you have to learn the context you have to learn a lot of things and afterwards you have to show what you have learned to someone senior to you and then you have the license to actually speak up like this but what today happens is if every person out there is going to give his part of his version of islam his version of how he sees things anyone can interpret anything wrong it can be islam it can be other than islam so you have to be very clear in trying to teach this and if you see the history of our prophet he was clearly clearly taken as a rahma as a blessings he was one of the most merciful messengers who talked nothing about mercy let me quote some examples example number 1 there was once a mother who came and told the the prophet that my son bringing her son my son has a small problem what's the issue my son eats a lot of sugar he likes sweets can you advise him not to do that and what does the prophet say yes fine can you come tomorrow okay so the mother and the son goes and they come back again tomorrow so the next day they come and ask him uh, we came yesterday so my son has got you know a problem where he likes lot of sugar can you advise him if you advise he might listen he says yes okay but come tomorrow then they came the third day and again third day tomorrow and they come on the fourth day and what did the prophet say the prophet called him and said uh, my dear son don't eat lot of sugar it's bad for the body the mother was you know puzzled why why oh prophet why didn't you say this on the first day why did you say it now and the prophet says i myself like to eat a lot of sugar when i like to do that how can i advise someone else not to do that i had to control i couldn't control the second day i couldn't control the third day but after that yes i also had stopped eating sugar so i was in a in a, in a situation where i can advise him it's a important learning there was another time a person came and asked the prophet what is islam he said nothing islam is all about being patient there is lot of words it can be peace you know so many things uh, islam is patience he said okay fine he looked here and there and he asked oh prophet what is islam he says yes islam is patience okay and he again asks oh prophet what is islam he says patience okay prophet what is islam you get annoyed right i get annoyed what's happening here he asked for five times and five times the answer was patience and he says you are indeed a true prophet i wanted to test you because you are telling that islam is patience i want to see whether you have patience so i kept on testing you and even fifth time you were so cool and calm in answering me as islam means patience with this i understood that it is patience see how islam teaches it like this there was once a narration which talks about a lady who is not good with the neighbors and the prophet said that you know you might be doing all the good you might be doing all the prayers but if you are not good with your neighbors that's going to be unaccepted in islam and in islam the prophet and the scholars define something called neighborhood and remember my dear friends this neighborhood does not mean muslim neighbors no it means any neighbors it means basically any neighbors the prophet said that the neighborhood in islam is defined 
as if your house is located here your 40 houses front of you 40 houses behind you 40 houses on the right hand side and 40 houses on the left hand side a radius of 160 houses is your neighborhood a Muslim is supposed to know what's happening in his neighborhood it is bad for a Muslim if his neighbor who can be anyone to have not been having food in the house and if this guy in his house is eating you know a belly full of food that's wrong that's a sin if whoever your neighbor is make sure that your neighbor also has food if you have too much of food you share your food with others this is basically something which Islam basically teaches there was once uh, during the time of the Prophet where people were very ignorant so these people come inside the mosque they do various things and goes and there was once a person who came inside the mosque he was he didn't have much mind he comes inside the mosque and he urinates during the Prophet's time he comes he, he didn't know like you know it's bad good they didn't know he comes and urinates all the companions got worried I mean this is a mosque and what is this guy really doing come let's go and push him out the Prophet said no wait till he finishes don't disturb him wait till he finishes doing that act after he finished called and said this is a mosque it's a clean place better not do it here and the Prophet himself cleaned it inside the mosque so this is the teaching a compassionate thing which basically we learn out of Islam and this is totally taught about uh, the Prophet teaching himself and things like that there was once once a boy who came and told the Prophet oh Prophet this is exactly what he said oh Prophet I like to do adultery I like to do adultery and a lot of people are telling him you know no it's bad that these I like to do adultery no the the companions who are listening to this got really worked up you come to a religious leader and talk about this the Prophet did not get upset he said okay fine so you like to do adultery yes okay fine would you like if someone does the same act with your mom or your sister or someone in your house he says no yeah oh prophet I'll get angry he says the same thing when you do that act with someone else that is the sister the daughter or the mother of someone so it's better to avoid isn't it he says yes oh prophet what you're saying is correct that's it no complicating into that you know you're wrong and you know you should be chased and you should be killed no 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 nothing of that sort it's very humbly being how you address these things so our teachings are based on these anything beyond that we do not know how certain teachings come it all has to be compassionate in terms of what we are trying to understand out of this we have something is interesting regarding to the Quran why is the Quran so special because number one it has not changed in the last 1400 years never been changed nothing has been changed it's easy to memorize number two Today in the world there are millions of people who have memorized the whole Quran where even if the Qurans are burnt or whatever is being done there is even a chance where they can be reproduced million times because everyone has easily memorized it and it's easy to memorize as well. These words are more often read book. Every time in our prayer the Muslims they go through the Quran. Its recitation is part of every culture. Like the Arabs have a separate thing in their recitation the non-Arabs, the Asian, the Americans, they have, it's like an interesting culture being, you know, formed in terms of that. Many incidents of the past have been revealed, which we will be discussing, and also the relationship it has with modern theories. Let us go through it. This is something which was, which we understood from the Quran, where communication happens with ants. There is a, there is a passage in the Quran which talks about there is a group of ants and in this group of ants a certain ant advising the other ants and the revelation was saying that this ant who is the leader is actually the queen and see the see the complexity of Arabic grammar and if anyone talks about Arabic grammar the highest level of Arabic grammar is the Quran the, in, if you want to master Arabic literature master this book and in this in Arabic when they refer to the ant how do we know it's a queen because the ant is being talked in feminine in the Quran not in masculine the, 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 the Arabic language talks about the ant in feminine and therefore it is understood that it is the queen which they are referring to and the queen talks about it and today there is various research done about understanding how not only ants communicate the communication of ants is similar to human beings they meet with each other there is in ants a hierarchy like you have a hierarchy there is the queen the queen has its supporters the supporters have the laborers the, there are workers 
all these people are there, it's like a pyramid of the hierarchy. So even it is also mentioned here. This is something interesting where the Quran talks about in three to four areas about a particular sea. This particular sea has two seas and these two seas do not mix each other. Um, I don't know how clear is the picture. The one in the left hand side could be one. The one in the left hand side is a sea inside the sea. Understand what I'm trying to say here? It is inside the sea when people go they find that below the sea there is another layer of thick water which is also you know like a sea but it does not get mixed you're already in water you can go further in water in two different layers that's one number one number two in Johannesburg towards South Africa they find in the outer sea something like this one part of it is salt water one part of it is not salt water and the the, the understanding is also been taught in the Quran that this is like this so people used to think how can a book which was revealed 1400 years ago actually talk about these incidents? So they are our researchers who also, you know, were researching about this. Look at this first picture which we, which we see. Uh, a 250 MB hard drive. See how big it is. It was very expensive. And today everything is put into very little. Like the microchip which you can see there. Which all of you all will be having it in your phones or cameras etc there is something interesting in how humans can design this there is something how they understand and let me show you one important thing here this is one of the most interesting things I ever found and when I was just looking at it I just thought the Quran talks about how every thumbprint everyone has is unique now I'm going to explain you how serious is this you and me try to take the size of this thumb try to take the size of this thumb draw it in a paper and try to draw some designs take the world's best artist how many designs do you think he can put inside this thumb 50 designs but one design cannot repeat again imagine one design cannot repeat again so he does one designs with lines like this lines like that maybe inside a different drawing but only the drawing has to be in this much size of space at a point he will understand that beyond this point he cannot design anything beyond this point he goes out so he finishes at 50 or 100 God knows and here we see that in the world you and mine everyone's fingerprint is different there is 7 billion population at the moment in the world forget people who died there is 7 billion living at the moment everyone's fingerprint is unique there is no one who has got the same fingerprint how can it be when humans cannot basically understand it? It's a big mystery and uh, it's basically told in the Quran that the fingerprints are going to be unique as well. So these are certain things which we like to share. Why Islam is misunderstood? This is an interesting thing. Islam is misunderstood. By the way, I have one or two exercises I like to share with you all. And I don't want this to be a conventional uh, talk which I'm going to give you like you know don't think that you guys are in a classroom you want to ask questions you can ask questions and if you do not ask questions I ask questions from you that's how it works okay so listen I just took this snapshot which made me you know interesting and this this is for ev everyone and our people even have to learn this the greatest mistakes we human make in our relationship is we listen half the other guy is telling something we listen half we understand a quarter we think zero nothing and we react double that's that that's happening everywhere my dear friends it's it's this is a lesson to me I saw this when I entered a certain office I quickly took a snapshot because it is it is worth to to remember this it's it's worth to take a printout and paste it in front of your desk and always think are you a victim of this yes you and I are victims of this relationships go for a six because of this reason there is issues communal issues or whatever issues because of this there are certain things we do not have to react so much but too bad we just make decisions because we don't think you know with our thinking is zero and we make too fast decisions okay the next slide I'm going to show you something I will keep that slide for three seconds and I'm going to go back 
in that three seconds you see what you have saw and you keep it in your mind don't tell it to anyone after I go back I'm going to ask you all what did you all see deal yes okay let's see okay again um, can I have some volunteers just to tell out what did they uh, what did they see don't don't discuss with anyone don't say what did you read um, someone from this side can tell me what they saw anyone yes anyone or do you want me to show again Okay, one answer, there was a triangle, I told you to tell me what you all have seen, there was a triangle with the letter bird in the sky in the middle. Good description, anyone else? Yes? Okay, yes? Same, anyone else? How many saw the words bird in the sky in the triangle? Raise up their hands. Nicely, this is like scratching. Very good. How many saw something other than bird in the sky? Raise up their hands. Interesting. Majority has seen what I told first. Um, what did what did you what did you see? He saw two birds. <laughs> he saw two birds. Two birds in the sky probably. <laughs> yes. What did you see, uh, my friend? Okay, right. Let's go. Be, let's 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 go forward. This is what I showed. This is this is a this is basically an illusion. There are so many illusions which I use in my training programs. I show you a triangle and I ask how many triangles are there. You think there is five? No, there is about twenty-five triangles. You don't see the twenty-five triangles. You do not see the word the because. You and I who do not understand this is called stereotyping. This is stereotyping. One guy does that, everyone is like that. So you go in the UK, you go to the UK and they ask you where are you from? And you say you are a Sri Lankan? Oh, so you are a Sri Lankan, they ask. When they ask you, so you are a Sri Lankan, that tone means before you came, some Sri Lankan has done some problem and gone. And <laughs> And he knows, he knows that you are a Sri Lankan and he is like one step behind you saying, ah, so you are a Sri Lankan. The same reaction happens when, you know, whoever is going to listen to this on YouTube should understand, same reaction goes when an Indian or a Bangladeshi or a Pakistani goes. <laughs> Our Asians are crazy sometimes. The students who go there. So we stereotype, one Sri Lankan is like this, every Sri Lankan is like that. One guy from this school, X school is like this, that means everyone is like that. That's very bad. Stereotyping is very bad. Stereotyping is really crazy. Okay? Right. Let me ask a small question. Listen to me very carefully again. Small question. <coughs> I want feedback like this. I will repeat if you want. My words do not have anything hidden in it. It's not a riddle, it's a straightforward thing on stereotyping. Okay? Listen to it very carefully. Number one, there was a doctor. This is a test on stereotyping. Number one, there was a doctor and a boy who went out on fishing. There was a doctor and a boy who went out on fishing. The boy is the doc the the boy is the son of the doctor. But this doctor is not the father of this boy. Who is the doctor here? Give me an answer. The boy and the doctor went out on fishing. Number two, the boy is the doctor's son. Number three, but the doctor is not the father of this boy. Number four question, who is the doctor? Can I have an answer? Let us see, are we victims of stereotyping? Yes. Okay, any other answers? Yes. What? Okay, any other answers? 
some of you all we got the right answer some of you all are just guessing what's happening here because this is stereotyping when I say the father the doctor and the boy went out on fishing a lot of people in their mind have already created a picture what's the picture this is a, a man why only men go on fishing and the boy and the doctor who are doctors always males are doctors there are no lady doctors there are when we say teacher it's a lady teacher there is no gen teachers this is stereotyping so the boy and the doctor goes out of fishing so that means it's a doctor a gent with a stethoscope and all these you know this is the picture created he goes on fishing this boy is the doctor's son understood but this doctor is not the boy's father oh how can that be it's the mother the mother can go out there and the mother can be a doctor we we make this mistake daily we stereotype this guy is from that group he's going to be like this and this guy is like you know he's going to be like this maybe some of you all would have stereotyped me thinking who is going to come today who, who on earth is going to talk about Islam today is it going to be someone from Al Qaeda all wrong we do not have any direct any links nothing with them this all it, we, we are totally against into this so-called words on terrorism and all it's just totally out maybe one percent is doing 99 percent is not doing just focus on the 99 percent we love to be in peace we we have opposed openly all those kind of acts so you do not have to stereotype no one has to stereotype anyone in any faith in any community we can live the way we used to live guys those days okay continuing one of the aspects of Islam which I was told that you are organizing this because after Ramadan it's to uh, it's to commemorate on this Ramadan when it comes into Ramadan something interesting Muslims in Sri Lanka fast only 13 hours the Muslims and the non-Muslims should know that though we have Muslims in Sri Lanka fasting for 13 hours in the Europe and some part of North Europe there is a particular community who fasts for 20 hours in the UK it's 20 hours the worst is Greenland which is about 22, 22 and a half hours what am I talking about how many hours are there a day 30 or 40 or 50 hours just 24 hours a day in 24 hours a day there are a group of Muslims who fast for 20 hours 21 hours 22 hours this is one of the most sacred months the most enjoying months for Muslims in Greenland there is a group of Muslims who fast they they say that they are not from Greenland they can go to another country but they purposely don't do that they want to they want to experience fasting for 21 hours it's like a gift they like to enjoy so it is something really interesting and what I know is that some parts of uh, fasting has also been prescribed in the Buddhism as well as in Hinduism as well that's something interesting you want to control your metabolism best thing is try fasting one or two days it does not have to be the way we do I know our Hindu brothers and sisters they have a particular fast where they can fast but they can drink water try to start something like that little by little it's good for your body yeah and this is a nice campaign which says I am fasting from sunrise to sunset ask me why so they go and tap him and ask why, why are you doing that it's a very interesting thing which they did uh, it also fasting has lot of lot of advantages it does not have to be the way we fast but it has to be the way anyway you can control food it might even be a, an answer to cancer coming to our prayers I took this picture from Gaza in Gaza when all the mosques have been destroyed people still did not forget to pray still people did not forget to pray and for those who are here you should understand that a minimum of Muslim will pray like this five times a day so five times a day basically he has to be in prayers so that is also you know particularly something unique unless what you see in Friday where there are a lot of you know traffic blocks in the road uh, it's a compulsory thing where everyone goes to mosque only on that time else they can pray in that allocated time so that is another uniqueness which we see in Islam what about Islam teachers with other cultures look at point number one the hadith when I say the hadith it means the narration of Sayyidina Asma in receiving gifts there are some people they they are Muslims but for some other reasons their mom and dad are non-Muslims Islam strictly teaches just because their mom and dad are non-Muslims do not do not go against them do not do not hurt them you have to still obey and follow them 
So during the Prophet's time, when parents were like that, they wanted to exchange gifts. They came and asked the Prophet, can we exchange gifts? He says, of course, they are your mom and dad. Do exchange gifts. There was one, once a funeral going. A funeral was of a Jew. And the Prophet stood up. This Jew is dead and gone. He just stood up like that. He's not a person who is living. I have all these problems they ask me when I go to these schools. They say, uh, majority Muslim schools. So we live in a Muslim school and our teacher is a non-Muslim. Should we respect him or her? I said, by all means, yes. That's, not a, that's a stupid question to ask. The Prophet even respected the body of a Jew. And he stood up when the Jew was going, the Jew's body was taken. And the companions asked, oh Prophet, isn't that a Jew? He says, yes, he's a Jew, but he was a human being, wasn't he? He was a human being. Respect his humanity which he has. So it was like that. Uh, number two, exchanging gifts with non-Muslim. There was a king uh, in Ethiopia, a Christian king, which our Muslims used to exchange gifts during the Prophet's time. It was well established that we had greater, greater links with that. If you take in Sri Lankan history, our Muslim has got great uh, relationship with a lot of kings in Sri Lanka as well. Also, you know, in other countries as well. Also, there were doctors who used to assist during the Prophet's time. There were guides, there were doctors. All these people used to assist Muslims. When the Prophet was migrating from Makkah to Medina, uh, it's a city in Arabia, when they, were, when they were migrating, they met a person called Abdullah ibn Uraikat. Abdullah ibn Uraikat was not a non-Muslim, but they asked, do you know the pathway where you can go like this? He says, yes, can you guide us? And they went together. This is nothing about hating anyone or nothing. No, it's, it's not in our religion like that. We have to work together, you know, it's called, you know, unity through diversity. Remember this word, we have unity through diversity. Everyone is different here. Physically everyone is different here, but still we, you know, we tolerate everything here. That is how it was done and that is how we also are going to continue as well. Islam and other cultures. Everyone thinks that, you know, Muslims have also got a very unique way of greeting. But we can even greet other cultures as well. This is a tribe in New Zealand. And you know how do they greet? They go to the person closely and they rub their nose with each other. Very interesting, isn't it? Uh, this is one of my friends, an Australian scholar called Imam Afraz Ali. He, when he went there, people came to greet him. You're not going to push him and say, no, 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 go away, this is wrong. Assalamu alaikum, give the hand. No, you don't have to do that because he does not know that. So he has a unique way of greeting, you embrace it, simply as that. There is no need to give your hand and always hug each other, no. If he is not comfortable, you can even welcome him like that. Islam is across every culture like that. We will blend according to that particular culture. Most of these people who I have taken are from my teachers, who have gone and met the highest religious authorities in the world. And we do not have any problem with anyone. It is about living in, in harmony and peace. And most of them who are here have met a lot of religious dignitaries and we like to continue the same. So they are mostly my teachers who are here. Look at this incident in Egypt. In Egypt when there were problems, in the first one which you can see, Muslims were praying inside, in, in, in outside in the road of the mosque and there were some Christian brothers who came and guarded the area. And when it was time for Christians to go to the church, the below picture, the Muslims went and guarded that so that there is no problem going to happen. This so-called extremism, terrorism, no, we are not going to give room for that. We are united here and we are going to be like that. The both the communities guarded each other. This is a tremendous picture. And the same happened in Pakistan. The same where our ladies went there and did the same. The same happened in Pakistan. This is the same where Everyone had to pray together and all the people in the road in Egypt, you know, they, they got across all the communities and together they were praying for peace. It happens like this. Every community was represented here. This is one of my favorites. I respect the Dalai Lama a lot for, you know, his services which he has done. And interestingly, he is a very jovial character as well. He likes to move with everyone. When the Dalai Lama visited a medical university which there were a lot of, lot of Muslim students, he posted a photograph like this. This was in the internet. Very interesting. There is n no one has got any issues here. Look at the happiness in everyone's faces. Do we have this happiness today? We don't even smile at the person next to us. We meet someone in another community, we just turn our faces and we run or we show a very rude face. 
But see, look at their faces. Do they seem to have any problem with anything? There is no problem with anything. And the Dalai Lama wants to add a little humor to it. He covers his face also. He wants to add a humor because everyone is, you know, brothers and sisters of everyone. So there is no big issue to create here. So they live like this. A very interesting thing. Finally, before I conclude, just to go through whether I have missed any points before I go to a question and answer session. Finally to say, I'm going to just pick out two areas of basically which has uh, mis uh, any misconceptions regarding Islam. And the first mis misconception is this. Are all Muslims are Arabs? Some people think all Muslims are Arabs. Or all Muslims are in Saudi Arabia. It's wrong. They think like that, that is wrong. Guys, you have to understand that in the world, how many percent of Muslims are Arabs? It's only 15 percent. Some people think 100 percent Muslims are Arabs. No, wrong. It's only 15, not even 50. It's 15. 15 percent of people who are Muslims are Arabs. Then what about the balance 85 percent? The balance 85 percent are in Africa, in North America, in Europe, in Asia, in Asia, a lot in Indonesia, a lot in Pakistan, and a lot in Malaysia, it diverses like that. So do not misunderstand that you get a news from uh, Saudi Arabia which says this, no, no, they do not represent totally Islam. The country Saudi Arabia came only, the word came in 1920s. That's it. Anything to do with Islam is just relating to what Muslims do. So do not get into these media reports which you know, show certain things. There are Muslims every part of the world, they are as it is. But Arabia is just one part and if you see the order of the population, it is actually the third. It's not the first. The first is Asia. Uh, I cannot remember the percentage. Second is 27% in Africa. A lot of Muslims in Africa. Third is yes, coming into Arabia. So majority are actually non-Arab Muslims. Second thing is, amongst Arabs, there are a lot of non-Muslims. Every Arab does not have to be a Muslim. In Arabs, there are Jewish Arabs. There are Christian Arabs. The Jewish Arabs follow Judaism, and the Christian Arabs follow Christianity. And if you, show, if you saw the picture which I showed you earlier, the, the people in Egypt who were wearing black and going on the road, they were the Christian Arabs in Egypt. They were Christian Arabs. Are they Arabs by, uh, by culture and by, by uh, their family? Yes, they are Arabs. But they are Christian Arabs. So it goes on like that. That's number one. Number two, the most, uh, the most heated word today is jihad. Just look into this. The true Arabic meaning of jihad is to struggle. However, in Islam, it is often used to describe the striving in the way of God. There are many forms of jihad, but the most important ones are jihad in nafs. That is the jihad with oneself. I have a bad quality in me that I think bad about others. I have a quality where I argue with others. I have a quality where I hurt others. From today onwards, I'm not going to hurt anyone. That is also jihad. That is jihad. I have jihad, jihad by action. I always do something bad with my action. I always do something bad. I'm going to stop that action. That is a jihad by action. And jihad be safe. Jihad using the sword if there is. There is not always any jihad to go and fight or do all this. No, Islam is totally against it. And whoever the extremisms which is coming forward, all the scholars everywhere have boldly refuted all this. If there is one percent of such in every community who is acting like this, we cannot have a control with everyone. But only thing is we can just reject that and ignore it and just wait. That's all what basically we can do. So, this is something interesting which caught my eyes. The one which you see in white color is the exact robes which we wear when we go on a pilgrimage. And the ones which you see on the left is the same exact way which is worn how the priests wear. This is exactly how we were, li li how we were living, only if you can see the color is different. You understand what I say? There is nothing else. Your blood and my blood is still red color. Anyone has luminous color here? Probably no one. If you have other than red, it's a sickness as well. Medically, it's a sickness and there is, a, there is a, a small percentage of sickness where your blood changes into color. 
but there is nothing more to fuss about here because we all can live like that and that is exactly the teachings of what Islam says Islam does not go and you know uh, forces things by nature nothing at all it is just how we basically understand so my my last thing which I like to end up is our culture has accepted two lies and these are two big lies when I say our culture every culture I mean if I do this presentation somewhere else if you disagree with someone's life you either have to hate them or fear them you disagree with someone you have to be scared of them or you have to you know hate them there is nothing to do like that you don't have to hate anyone you don't have to get scared of anyone number two if you love someone you have to believe and agree to all what they say still no just be moderate and take it as it is during the Prophet's time there was someone who came to the Prophet and said oh Prophet I like to come into like what you have done whole night I'm going to pray whole night and the second person said whole year I'm going to fast and the third person says I'm not going to get married third person says they wanted to be you know holy the first person says I'm going to entire my life I'm going to pray day and night I'm not going to sleep at night I'm going to pray and second person says I'm going to fast the entire year we fast only a month completely he says entire year I'm going to fast and third he says I'm going to I'm not going to get married so that I can control my egos about controlling ego I'll finish that talk with my talk at the moment the Prophet called them and said are you the three who said these three things they said yes they were close companions they said no all are wrong I am the most beloved to God and I pray but I sleep at night I pray but I sleep at night I fast same way there are months and days I don't fast and I also marry and I am the most closest to God how are you going to achieve that by doing all this going into extreme stuff he says no don't do that always Islam teach about, teaches about controlling ego into something really modern is that clear with everyone and finally a nice story which I found out from uh, you know Lord Buddha's teachings where there was a person who came and asked Lord Buddha he says uh, to Lord Buddha that how do I find the path of happiness that's what we all are trying to we might be earning a lot we still have problems sometimes you find that the beggars in the road have a better life than us there was an article in the paper that a beggar in Sri Lanka averagely earns 6,000 rupees a day that that article you might google it somewhere in the internet uh, 6,000 rupees a day for today's context yes okay so sometimes you might see a lot of rich people have a lot of problems so one person comes to your Lord Buddha and asks I want happiness okay I want happiness and Lord Buddha says what you have to do is you're thinking too much about yourself you're thinking too much about yourself why don't you first forget about yourself thinking about someone is very selfish forget about yourself okay he says I'll forget about myself number one number two why do you go behind your desires why do you want to go behind your desires cut off your desires so he forgot about himself he cut the eye he forgot about his desires he cut the want and Lord Buddha says there you go you have happiness now I want happiness you cut off I you cut off want you're remaining with happiness you wanted happiness cut off yourself cut off your desires be happy with what you have you will get happiness and that's the exact teachings of our blessed Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam may peace and be blessings be upon him so with this I conclude I conclude whatever I wanted to tell here and I, I seek the blessings of Almighty and his messenger as well and I, I wish all the students best here in their academic performance and also I bless and I wish this establishment all success and if there is any questions probably I'm ready to address them Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh any questions interesting if there is no questions that means only two things have happened either you have completely understood and agreed with what I've said or you know what you have not agreed or understood anything what I said okay there is an interesting question what is the reason for extremists to come about the reason behind extremists is that most of the time people cannot control their emotions controlling emotions is very important 
If you for an example try to see what's happening in Gaza is something very serious and our hearts cannot bear what's happening in Gaza. But what's happening in Gaza in Islam is no permission to actually run anything extreme or a, something to do with terrorism there. I was just looking the other day in Gaza that you know there was a pregnant mother who had given birth who, sorry a pregnant mother who has been killed in that in that confrontation and she has been about eight or nine months and the baby had actually come out of the stomach alive and the baby was almost like suffering there they have gone and put the baby in an incubator the incubator is that small device which you have the babies what, what, what happens is in Israel when electricity is going to Gaza they stop electricity for about 12 hours and they have only one big hospital called Ashaf, uh, Ashifa in the Shifa hospital when electricity is cut off they cannot do anything there so when the baby the incubator what happens is they cut off the electricity and the baby died this is one out of thousand stories there it, 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 it breaks our heart when we see all these injustice which happens but similarly when people cannot control their emotions they cannot control their emotions because they uh, get carried away and you know they forget whatever it is that's where you know they go into these type of things a simple kind of extremism I'll tell you which you and I can understand in, in a common way we let's say we go to a funeral we go to a funeral one of your friend's mother passes away and you see your friend you know going on in the ground dashing the ground crying only thing what you can tell is calm down this happens to everyone one day you will die one day I will die one day my mom will die one you can calm her but who goes through the agony is that person you can do all the good wordings to satisfy that person's anger and the emotion but you will experience the same emotion when you undergo and you will know that gosh the same advice which I try to tell my friend I myself cannot follow it my mom has passed away and I am myself getting too emotional you thought you can control your emotions but to see you cannot control your emotions you think you, you think you can control emotions it's other way the emotions control you the emotions control you and this is the reason why people come into studying religion the Sufi ways or they try to follow something even in Buddhism it is taught some try to meditate by meditating they try to control the mind no matter what happens I can only control what I am doing I cannot control whatever is happening there and whatever happens there is happening for a reason that's all these people are not at that level but the good news is these people are just one percent whatever it is it's just one person there is nothing to worry and these people will always be there I mean ask from your lecturers you have how many students in a class 40 don't you have one or two spoiled brats you have can you eliminate the spoiled brat can you have a class of 40 people intelligent good perfect you cannot you will have one or two spoiled brats these guys are the spoiled brats that's it Okay, so I, I will leave with your permission now and I wish you all the best. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala Sayyidina wa Nabina wa Mawlana Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.